Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to be talking about the relationship between a function and its derivative. We're going to be doing that in GeoGebra, so make sure to download GeoGebra. It's available at geogebra.org. You can run it from the website directly. You can also run it from a smartphone, or you can download an app to a tablet. I'm just using the desktop version. When given the option, select Algebra, toggle down the graphics option, let's turn on the grid, and center up our graph. Down below in the input bar, let's type in f of x, so f open parentheses, x close parentheses, is, and we're going to type in ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. You don't have to use asterisks for multiplication, but I like to use them just for safekeeping. So a times x cubed, and notice here that x is blue, it, that's GeoGebra telling me that it knows that that's the independent variable, plus b times x squared plus c times x plus d. Press enter. It's going to ask you, do you want to create sliders? And yes, create those four sliders. It places them here neatly, setting them each to 1. Let's change this function to something interesting. Let's leave a to be 1. Let's make b be 2. Let's make c be negative 2 and d be negative 1. Click on the function. Let's make it, let's thicken the line up a bit, and let's make it be black. So it's our base parent function. On the left side, up by the arrow, select a point, and let's add a point on our function. So just click directly on the function. Let's click somewhere here over, over here on the left side. And let's actually add a tangent line onto that. To do that, come over here to the left side. Where this perpendicular line is, select the drop down arrow and pick tangent. To make the tangent line, select point A and then click on the function on which it's attached. All right, and there's our tangent line. You can actually see the equation over here. It's labeled G. Let's change the colors of this. So click back on the arrow. Anytime you work with tools, you always need to click back on the arrow because otherwise you're going to try to be using that tool again. It confuses GeoGebra and you. So let's change this actually to a brown. So I'm going to change this color to this brown. And let's thicken it up just a little bit. And I'm going to change point A to brown as well. You can move this A around and actually see a little bit better so what it means by it's that tangent line. It's just skimming across across the edge of that across the edge of that function. When you get done, put it back around on the left side. And let's actually add the slope. Take the slope, come over here to where you see angle, click the drop down arrow, and select slope. To do slope, select the line, and there you have it. Where I have it right now, I have a rise of 7.47 for every run of one. Click back to the arrow. Now as you move A around, you'll see that that slope updates live as you move point A around. When you get done playing with it, move it back to the left. All right, we're gonna define another point. Click on the point tool, click anywhere really, and it, def it added point B. I'm actually going to rename that, clicked on the arrow, and then rename that point D1. Double click over the point on the left hand side. I'm gonna redefine this point, instead of just it being negative seven two, which is where I just happened to click a second ago, I'm going to change this to x of capital A. So what that means is this is going to be the x value of point A. So I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that that's what happened. D1 is now the same x value as A. So as I move A around, notice D1 just follows, but the y doesn't change because I didn't define it any differently. This time, if you double click on it, instead of editing it inside that, it creates a little pop-up. I'm going to do something similar, but this time I'm going to define it as slope. If you look over on the left, our slope is defined as m, so it's going to be the x value of point D1 is the x value of A, and the y value is that current slope. Hit enter. And so right now, I have a slope of 7.08, so I don't see that slope anymore. I don't see my point, so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So you can see there's that point at 7.08. So as I move point A around, you'll see that point D1 follows, 
and its y value is going to be that respective slope. Pretty neat, huh? Now, this is the cool part. Click on D1, right click on it, and select Trace On. As you move A around, D1's going to follow just like it did a second ago, but it's going to leave a trail or a trace. Notice what happens. You can sort of trace back over any gaps that, that you might have accidentally created. Notice what happens here. What do we get? What shape is left by D1? You should observe that that's a parabola. Now let's investigate this a little bit. Roots are important to us in math. So when do we see a root on this trace? When does D1 cross from being positive to being negative? It's right here, whenever the slope changes from being positive to negative, that's when D1 changes from being positive to negative. So over here we see the same thing. When D1 switches back from being negative to positive, that's when the slope switches from being negative to positive. Now, what's happening in the original parent function to create this, the vertex of the parabola? Let's back A up a little bit. Let's see what's happening. What's happening to the slope right there? Well, let's look at some of these numbers. So here, my slope is negative 2.44, negative 2.98, negative 3.12, negative 3.3, negative 3.33, negative 3.3, negative 2. Point, negative 3.17. So right there is when it switches from getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper to less and less and less steep. If you recall from calculus, that point is called the point of inflection. That's when it switches from being concave down, like it is here, down like a frown, to concave up, to up like a cup. These traces are cool to explore, but anytime you move the graph around, or hit undo or something like that, the traces go away. I'm going to just click and drag to move the graph. Anytime you do that, that goes away. So I need a little bit more permanence there. So I want GeoGebra to actually graph the derivative. So down on your input, let's graph the actual derivative. So let's graph f prime, that's just an apostrophe. So f prime of x is, and start typing in the word derivative. Once you hit der, it gives you a bunch of options. Pick the first one, and our function is just named f. So f and hit enter. Let me expand the side just a bit. You can see our original function, and now you can actually see the equation of the derivative. And now this function is lined up right on that trace. Kind of neat, huh? Let's change our new function to actually be blue, because that's what we saw our derivative was a second ago. I'm going to turn trace off. So let's move around A and see what happens. If I move around A, notice the graph of the derivative changes, as does the equation of, of the derivative over on the side. What's interesting to note that the only numbers that are changing is that first leading value. I'm going to put this back to 1. Now what about B? We can change B, and the original function moves around, as does the derivative, and notice the second numbers are the only numbers that are changing in the derivative in original equation. And let's look at C. I can move C, and the original equation moves around, as does the derivative, and those third numbers are the numbers that are moving. And lastly, let's take a look at D. Notice what happens with D. As I move D around, the original function changes, but what's happening to the derivative? Notice it is not changing at all. All this D is, this last value, this constant, this, this is not affecting the derivative. The derivative of a constant is just zero. It's not impacting the derivative. And you can see that here, that as d changes, the derivative literally doesn't change because it's not changing the slope at all. Kind of neat to actually see that in practice. So what is the derivative of a function at a particular point? Well, at a, the derivative was the slope of this tangent line, or a little bit more formally, it's the instantaneous rate of change. So at a, that's that rate of change. That's how fast that function is changing. 
at that point. It's that instantaneous rate of change. Now, how can we describe the derivative in general? And in physical terms, it's the velocity. It's a graph of the overall rate of change. It's the overall how much this function is increasing or decreasing in response to the change to the next. It's a graph of the velocity. As a personal challenge, I want you to take what you've seen in this video and include a second derivative. Do all the steps we just did, but make it apply to a second derivative and see what happens. See if you can make any connections between the first derivative and the second derivative, and then any connection between the original function and the second derivative. Have fun!